Meredith. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here this morning. Hello, we have a five-year-old today. Somebody who is five. Who, who would that be? What? <laughs> hey, let us begin by singing happy birthday to Wyatt. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
have uh, some celebrities with us this morning. Yeah, this is my mom, <laughs> Lita, and they're from Eugene and her friend, uh, Toby, and my sister, Cindy. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Nice to have you with us. I hope you enjoy the service. <coughs> we also have one other celebrity, Hutchinson. Will you give us a report? Well, we want to thank you for all your prayers to the Gordon's doing much better. He now has a fused knee and maybe in six to ten weeks he'll be walking on it. Oh, hallelujah. I just keep uh, Gordon in our prayers. Uh, he's still in prayer, so uh, anyone who has a few minutes like to, to see Gordon, he's uh, not too far away. This time. Uh, Dorothy's not here this morning. Unfortunately, her nephew's brother uh, ended his life in Jamaica, and the service, the memorial service, is 10 o'clock this morning. So uh, we want to keep Richard, his dad, in prayer, and Dorothy's nephew. Seeka and uh, the family in prayer. The memorial service is 10 o'clock, so she's uh, at home uh, on the mat as the service uh, is broadcast. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I have a grandbaby, baby girl. Grandbaby girl. Congratulations, my oldest son, Sam. Nicole had her a week ago Thursday. Seven pounds, 13 ounce, 21 inches long. I'm doing well when I saw her last week. Where is she? She's over by Abilene. It's a big girl. Oh, and her name's uh, Axie Ruth. Oh, Axie. Axie. It sounds like an odd name, but it's uh, a very common old name.
And that comes from 2 Peter 3, verse 18. Oh God, this is a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your presence with us right now. We know that you delight in being with us. Give us true joy, true hope, and true peace as only you, our Lord, can. As we worship you through our words, we worship you through our prayers, and our songs, may you be greatly glorified. Your word is a blessing to us. It's a gift to keep us on, a, on your path. Your word is sweeter than honey and more to be prized than the finest. Gold. Help us to take your law, made flesh in Jesus Christ. Help us to take that law into our being as so as to live as people in covenant with you, and people in covenant with all of God's people around the world. Change us because we have been in your presence today. Eternal God, we ask a special blessing on each and every one who is here today. We ask a blessing on those who mourn at this time. We want them comfort them, let them know that Jesus Christ died just for their loved ones who've gone on, and Jesus Christ died, gave his life for each and every one of us. Father, we ask for safe traveling mercies for those who uh, are traveling from there to here, and those who will travel from here to there. We ask that you be with them as they travel along the way. We thank you for bringing them safely to us today. We ask that you continue to watch over each and every one of us. We pray for our nation. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would be saved. We pray for all Christians throughout the world. We pray that all those who intend evil against our Christian sisters and brothers would be turned back. We pray, O Lord, that uh, our nation would continue to be the ones who take care of those who are unable to take care of themselves. Bless our president at this time and all those in government over us. Bless all those who govern nations across the world. Help them to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please uh, turn with me to hymn 549. Hymn 549.
Bible, they're found on page 65. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, we read excerpts of that. We read Exodus 20, 1 through 4, and then we'll look at the in Listen to the word of God. Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words people of Israel, the children of Israel, and to Moses. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before you. You shall not make for yourself a great image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water of the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. Go to verse 7. You shall not take the name of your, the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him or her guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your main servant or your maid servant or your cat or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his ox, or his ass, or anything that is your neighbor's. Now, when all the people perceive the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood afar off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will hear. But let not God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to prove you, and that the fear of him may be before your eyes, that you may not sin. Now, please turn with me in the few Bibles. Turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew. If you're in the few Bibles, it's on page 27. Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Matthew 21, 33 through 46. Here another parable, and this is Jesus speaking. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, and got a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to tenants and went into another country. When the season of fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent out the servants, more than the first. And they did the same to them. Afterwards, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. When the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. And therefore the owner of the vineyard comes. What will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretched wretches to a miserable death. And let out the vineyard to all the tenants who will give him the fruit in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the heavenly forum. This was the 
Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation producing the fruits of power. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. When they tried to arrest him, they feared the multitudes because they held him to be a prophet. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today I want from those two passages to address your attention to making radical honesty, radical honesty, the root of our lives. Making radical honesty the heart and soul and root of our lives. Uh, today I read from the book of Exodus chapter 20. And that is the chapter that gives us the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. God gave the children of Israel the law, the commandments, the Ten Commandments. And he did this at the foot of Mount Sinai. Now why was the law necessary for this new nation? We've asked that question again. Why is the law necessary for us at this time? Why is the law necessary for all of God's people. The law is true and is functional and it is beautiful. Now keeping it is another problem. The law is best as designed to lead Israel to a life of practical holiness. It's also designed to lead us to a life of practical holiness. People could see the nature of God. People could see the God whom they love and the God whom they serve and God's plan for how we should live our lives. The law was intended to guide and direct the community intended to teach us how to meet the needs of each person in our community. And when I say our community, I mean our local community and our community worldwide. Today is Communion Sunday. It's a day in which we celebrate with all of the Christians throughout the world as we celebrate the communion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And honesty is at the heart of our relationship with God. Just as it is at the heart of our relationship with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Without radical honesty, all of our relationships We must be honest with God. We must be honest with people whom God has placed us among. Take the case of lying. Uh, there was a, a Geico commercial which showed Honest Abe. I, I hope you, you saw that commercial. Honest Abe was sitting there and uh, Mary Todd Lincoln wife came in and she stood before him and she turned around and looking all pretty and she says to honest Abe, you know, he cannot tell a lie. Does this dress make my backside look big? <laughs> now this is the Geico commercial. <laughs> honest Abe being honest Abe looked, paused for a minute, Answered honestly, and she walked off in a half. Well, is it permissible to tell a charitable lie? Is it permissible to tell a white lie? Or is every lie a violation of 
of the ninth commandment. Sometimes we want to flatter the other person and we, uh, you know, tell our white lie. Well, the ninth commandment says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's Exodus 20, verse 16. There was an author by the name of Sam Harris who wrote a book, a little book, a short book, and it was called Lying. Title, Lying. And he says we can radically simplify our lives and improve society by merely telling the truth in situations where others often lie. This is true even with white lies, which we tell for the purpose of sparing people discomfort. I wish we had time to go through all the commandments, but um, unfortunately we don't. But adultery, financial fraud, government corruption are all connected to a willingness to lie. God said to Moses, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And God is saying that people should not distort reality. The truth should not be twisted in order to serve our own needs and our own interests. Truth telling supports the integrity and vitality of the entire community. And honesty should always be radical and at the center of our lives. <clears throat> we need to be known as honest people. Radical honesty means fundamental honesty. Truthfulness that grows out of our love of our neighbors. Lying takes a toll on relationships even when the deceptions are just minor, just a shade off of the truth. Lying can also affect our relationship with God because God wants to have an open and honest relationship with each and every one of us. Or oh, as we look at the Ten Commandments, the first four, they're separated into two sections. The first four are connected with God. The, the, the six are connected with our neighbors. And you will notice that anytime God wants to get our attention, He talks about God and neighbor. No one is an island unto himself or herself. So the first commandment says, and I'm going to just boil it down, put God first. Commandment number one, put God first. Whatever you do, put God first. You wake up in the morning, go to God. Go to work, go to God. Come home, go to eat, go to God. Put God first. The second prohibits the worship of idols. Well, you know, uh, today, we, well, we don't worship idols, oh yeah, well, um, how important is our car? I mean, you know, we need a car to get from A to B, but uh, some of us worship those. We worship our money, we worship our stock accounts, and stocks and bonds, and, you know, that's all we live for. Not, not Nobody here, but some people worship idols. The third prohibits the misuse of God's name. Now, the best of us, we stub our toe, the first two words are, oh, and you know the second. The fourth commandment requires us to remember to worship, to keep the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Come to church. And you've done excellently this morning. You're here in church. These four commandments are meant to 
draw us into a personal relationship with God. Every Sunday morning we come and we get charged up once again to be able to get out into the world and face the world. And as time goes by, we get a chance to tell the people about Jesus. The truth is how God brought us out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. That's what he was telling the children of God. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of slavery. I brought you out of Egypt. I am the one who deserves your attention. I'm the one who fed you manna. I'm the one who provided water for you in the wilderness. I'm the one who's taking care of you. If we choose not to rest on the Sabbath, we live the lie that our value comes from our work, not from being children of God. Well, love for God, love for neighbor is only possible if we love God and we love our neighbors. And we do not bear false witness against our neighbor. Why? Because our neighbor is created in the image of God. And when we take false witness against our neighbor, we're actually taking false witness against God's image and the games God. We need to be known as people of radical honesty. We need people as they look at this church and they pass the church say, yeah, that's a good church. The people in there are honest, they're kind, they're gracious. We know those people in there and we know that they will tell the truth. We need radical honesty in our family relationships so that our children could look at us and say, you know, the one thing, we didn't have everything in life. In fact, I, I look back, we were kind of pretty poor, but we didn't know it because our parents were honest with us. Our parents loved us. Our parents provided the best they could for us. And our parents were honest. They told the truth. We need our grandchildren to look at us and say, wow, you know, granddad and grandma are honest. They always tell the truth. We need to live in a society where we are known for our radical honesty. Let us as the people of God who love God and love our neighbors as ourselves, let us do what we can to make radical honesty the root and the heart of our lives together. Let us continue to serve God and praise God and worship God in honesty. Let us continue to work for the betterment of humanity because of our radical honesty. May God bless each and every one of us. May God sustain us and bless us. May God keep us, help to keep us honest so that we are known by the world as radical, honest people. Amen. Please uh, stand with me and turn to hymn 881. Hymn 881.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken before you. Let us commune together. Savior Jesus Christ shed for you. Let us commune together. Let us pray. Eternal God, on this World Communion Sunday in which we celebrate the shed blood and the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We just thank you for this opportunity to be able to commune together here and throughout the world with all Christians worldwide. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Lord. We ask that you help us to be radically honest with you, with ourselves, with our community. Bless us and keep us in your perfect will, as we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen.
Greece, uh, turning with me, the hymnals, for the benediction in the bulletins, for the benediction. Let us repeat that together. Follow the path of life laid out for you, sweet golden teachings of our loving God. Go share the value of life giving gifts that is knowledge of Jesus. Go with power by spirit to live the way that leads to life and free. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious on you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen.